Marcy. All right, quick question. What's it like to be in Florida? Right? So our kids can go to school. As you heard from previous speakers, we can go to church. And clearly, we can practice freedom of speech. So it's great to be in Florida, and we are open for business. You know, James Madison, back in 1791, was brilliant, if you think about it. All the speakers you've heard, freedom of religion, that ties into the freedom to assemble. Freedom of speech, of course, morphs into the freedom to assemble. So what do we have? Think about this. Picture this. You have a large room with people gathered together, men and women. They're very respectful to each other. They were kind, discussing issues that they care about for our country. I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about over 75 years ago in Montgomery, Alabama. Events that paved the way for the future of our country. It was the NAACP, and it was a large hall that they put white tablecloths on and turned it into a meeting room. Women wearing beautiful dresses, men in suits, sitting there discussing civil rights. And they were told by the powers that be at the time that they couldn't well, they were letting them practice. However, by association, they had to turn over business records, which they did. But they also wanted them to turn over every single member's name. Now, back 75 years ago, what would that have done? Jeopardize their safety, right? People wouldn't have, they would have lost their jobs. Their families could have been injured. So they tried to stop them that way. What happened? The Supreme Court came in and, of course, ruled in their favor. The court said the right of association and assembly is an inseparable aspect of liberty, expanding the scope of the rights of association and assembly to prevent states from discouraging citizens from participating in groups that were engaged in lawful and ethical activities. That case paved the way and really crystallized the right to assembly, the right of association for generations to come. There's a big case now before the Supreme There's a big case now before the Supreme Court where those protections are being challenged in California regarding donor information. So watch that and see what happens. You know, when I was Attorney General here in Florida, um, Rick Scott was governor, and, right, Senator Scott now, and it was my biggest responsibility to uphold the Constitution, whether I agreed with it or not. I remember back in 2017, there was a person, he was a horrible person, and he was a white nationalist, and he was going to speak at University of Florida, my alma mater. So what did we do? Go Gators, right? Now, what did we do, though? The University of Florida was having him speak on campus. We knew there was going to be trouble. So Governor Scott, we didn't cancel him. We couldn't cancel him because as conservatives, we believe in the First Amendment. So what happened? Rick Scott, we had the National Guard. Rick had the National Guard on standby as a state of emergency. And I went out and encouraged all students not to attend. Don't go. Don't go. Because there could have been trouble. But as conservatives, we did not cancel it. Nor could we, because we believe in the First Amendment. In 1945, the court said, to peaceably assemble is one of the indispensable democratic freedoms guaranteed by the First Amendment. And it wasn't by accident or coincidence that the rights to freedom in speech and press were coupled in a single guarantee with the rights of the people to assemble. 
These are inseparable. Tocqueville said in the 1800s, Tocqueville was so, I guess, clairvoyant, you could say, in the 1800s in France, in no country of the world has the principle of association been more successfully used or unsparingly applied to multitude of different objects than in America, than in our great country. The right of acting for himself is that of combining those of fellow creatures and acting in common with all of them. No legislator can attack it without impairing the foundations of our society. So now fast forward all these years later and look at all of us here today. Matt Schlapp, thank you for CPAC. <laughs> Where you have a group of like-minded individuals and CPAC is the perfect illustration of the proper exercise of these rights. Peaceful, patriotic people banding together to advance the same common goals. As Tocqueville understood, it's the American way. Thank you, CPAC. God bless America, and God bless all of you. Thank you.